time for another episode in season four. I am uh, honored to have here a special co-host, my buddy, my friend, Jimmy Allen is with us and we- Such a short introduction, keep going. What do you mean? Uh, I want to make you go, I'll keep going, okay. Oh, I forgot to say, he is the, he is the new 2021 ACL new male artist of the year. First of his name, uh, father of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> And rightful ruler of the seven kingdoms. <laughs> <laughs> all my Game of Thrones fans. Uh, out all there. your Game of Thrones fans out there. Um, and, and, <laughs> and uh, we have here the 2012 ACM New Mill Artist of the Year, American Idol winner. Actually, if I, if I remember, if I remember correctly, didn't he beat you, Jimmy? Didn't he beat? Yes. Oh, oh okay. Wipe the floor with me. <laughs> God, he placed thirty nine spots ahead of me. All right. <laughs> oh man. Scotty McCurry, how are you today? How are you this morning? Man, I'm good. I'm good, dude. When I hear that, it makes me feel old. But then I'm like, dude, I'm still young as I'll get out. So it's it, like what, seventeen when you won? Yeah, something like yeah, seventeen. So. You buy a pack of shit. You couldn't even vote. Oh, <laughs> true. You could. <laughs> I couldn't do cigarettes. Yeah, I couldn't do anything. Join the military. Nah, none of that, man. Nowadays, I do it. I do it all. But no pay yeah. taxes. You were old enough to pay taxes. They'll, they'll get you with that. Yeah. Oh, well, they won't stop getting anything. you with that ever. No. Uh, ever. So let's go back. Let's let's go back because we we're we were talk. I'm 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 going to turn this into a quick interview of both of you, right quick, because obviously, new male so new male artist of the year. Both of you guys have won. Hey, I was supposed to be co-hosting. I want to ask Scotty some questions. Oh, well, you're going to ask Scotty some questions. Don't worry. Don't worry. As you put that nasty ass dip in your mouth. <laughs> Dude, you ever? I can't do dip, man. I, I love a I love a cigar. I, I could even do chew back in the day, my baseball days, but dip tore me up, man. Uh, I tried it. I tried it. And I can't do it. Oh, man. I started in high school uh, playing baseball. I actually got kicked out of two high school baseball games for doing tobacco. You really? <laughs> yeah. It's big league chew. What are you talking about? I had a big old wad of spit just ready. So when I went up to bat, I was like, whew. <laughs> he said, Jimmy, now you know, you're not old enough to do that, and that's illegal out here, so don't let me see it again. So, all right. Went back an outfit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was holding it. Oh my God, help us all. As long as I don't see you spit. And if you hold it, I can't do nothing. But these other umpires out here are going to see me spit. Going to see me see you spit. So don't spit. And I'm like, first pitch go by. I couldn't even swing because I have a mouth full of spit. And I just said, forget it. He said, you're out of here. I said, like, God, dog. <laughs> Oh, that's great, man. Oh, my God. All right. Um, so when you won, you, you, you just said how, you know, you felt it was old. You were 17 years old when you won. Are, were you, are you the youngest new male artist of the year? Um, when he won, when he won, because uh, you won Idol when you was 18, right? No, you won. 17 Idol. I think the, the ACM was 18. Um, so I don't know about the ACM. I know for Idol, I was the youngest male. Jordan Sparks was the youngest winner. But oh, I love Jordan yeah. Sparks. I have a crush on Jordan Sparks. Anyway, um, <laughs> I can make that introduction for you, but I think she married and taken. She, it now. she married and got a kid now. It ain't gonna work out. I'm still waiting for the introduction on JoJo, but we know how that situation turned out. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's dating one of our friends. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So that... Oh wow! Uh, yeah. The problem with Marcus is he don't even get a chance. You know how people say swing and a miss. He don't even swing. No. He's Step in the batter box and watch the first pitch. He's got a lot of spit in his mouth. He's got a lot. I wait to be walked to the first base. Is what happens. That's what happens. <laughs> is that stuff? So for speaking of baseball, Scotty, do you notice you do that on stage? The baseball swing. Oh, dude, I, I still. I love it. I love it too. <laughs> I don't know where that came that from? Did, tour, did that whole tour? I watched you do that every night. I was like, me and my band were like. Where's the swing? Where's the swing? Where's the swing? Right now, right there it is. Right there, there it is. <laughs> Dude, that's one of those, you don't even realize you're doing it. It's just one of those ticks. You just oh yeah, no it's all right. Jimmy spins around like he's Michael Jackson on his tour. He crushes it too. He crushes it. 
I he hate going it. on after Jimmy because his dance moves actually worked, and yeah. I did, like a full blow over here. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So, there. so what, 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 how, how did you feel when an ACM New Metal Artist of the Year, and how did you both feel in, like, the time difference? Because you, you both have have become – well, Jimmy wasn't successful in Idol, but um, – <laughs> But <laughs> yeah, for those of you listening, you, you, what I don't realize is that this is the shit talk that me and Jimmy do all the time to each other. So, <laughs> so this is going to be all the time throughout this entire interview. <laughs> um, so just don't talk bowling. We're not going to talk bowling at all whatsoever. I wax the floor with him and bowling. <laughs> bowling. Oh wow. Yeah, we're we're not going to talk about that. I need to get in on that match. Yeah, how, Scotty, so how'd you feel? You know, how'd you feel when you won? Idol, and then the next yeah. year in ACM New Mail of the Year. Yeah, we were we were talking before we hopped on here, press record. I mean, it, it was just kind of that surreal feeling. It's like, man, is this even real life? I mean, it wasn't that long ago. You know, we were both chasing it, and it just felt like a dream, you know, never reality. So then all of a sudden you're sitting there, and, and you're – in a show with your peers and all these people you look up to and then they're giving you an award you're like what the heck is is this real life so um still pretty surreal it's still sitting you know up on the mantle it's it's a proud proud moment for me did you get a trophy for that for uh idol uh yeah 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 that's uh that's over that's in nashville in the apartment there so it's always a cool talking piece it's always a fun one so. oh you're in uh, carolina right now yeah, I'm in Carolina right now. That's home base for me. I'd yeah. say it's more. It's probably like seventy thirty Carolina to Nashville. Back and forth. See, I'm I'm trying to convince uh, 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 my fiance to uh, let us move back to Delaware because she's from Delaware too. Oh man, and like Dude. I love where I'm from, bro. We got the ocean right there. I can fish all summer. You do it, the love- Dewey Beach. Yeah, we got Dewey Beach. We got Lewis Beach right there. We got uh, Rehoboth Beach. Ocean City's close. I just love my no, small. Here's the issue. Here's the issue with that, and we'll learn about that later on in a different episode. But the issue about it is that if Jimmy moved back to Delaware, all he's going to do is fish, and she ain't going to see him at all. She barely sees him now, so she definitely ain't going to see him when she goes go back to Delaware and fish all the time. Four o'clock in the morning, he's out on the boat fishing. Uh, it's just that small town living I miss, dude. I miss, you know, going to the grocery store, seeing people I know, then. Me and my buddies would fish all day. Then we'd go to the Moose Lodge and the Mason Lodge afterwards and drink dollar beers and play darts and cards. Like, it's it's simple. That's I, I that's it's great simple. living. Like, it's simple living. I love it. I know everybody. I've known everybody there since I was a kid. You know what I mean? Like, my oh, favorite. We got whole crabs there. We ain't got no crabs in Delaware. I mean, in Nashville, ain't no scrapple in Nashville. Ain't no Wawa. Ain't no Royal Farms. Ain't, ain't no, no Wawa. pizza. Right. They got no scrabble. They got no <laughs> <laughs> so what's it like? In, what's it like in, in North Carolina? Because you're in Garner. Right? Are you in Garner? Or are you? Yeah. So me and my wife, we live in Raleigh now. So we're we're What's your address? minutes from. What's that? What's your address. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a second. Whoa. Uh, but no. So we're in Raleigh now. So it's a little more of the city life. Still smaller. Nashville's. Every time I go, it's getting bigger and bigger. I mean, and I've been going for ten years now, but. It, still blows my mind but uh but yeah so we can still get that country feel and you go 20 minutes outside of any big city you're gonna you're gonna find some rednecks and, and some country living so we uh we have a good time here and it's just home our roots are so deep i mean my, my friends go back to when i was two years old and family and so um i just i love it here as long as i can make it work i'm in the studio we, i record in here i write songs in here and so as long as i can still get the music thing working you know I, i'm stay here as long as I can. Does your wife love Nashville more or Carolina? So she loves that. We're both in the same boat. We love, love Nashville and it, it's it's become our second home. But uh, it, her friends, we grew up together. Me and Gabi, we met when we were five years old. And like, so we went through all the stages of life together. And all her best friends are, are still right here too. So it's, it's just going to be tough. Managers and labels have been trying to pull me away for years now. I just like, you know, Maybe I, one, I look at it like I think years ago being in Nashville was cool, but now with technology, you yeah. 
label meetings on the phone. And half the time, artists wouldn't even go to label meetings. Our managers handle that. You yeah. got an airport right there. So you, if you need to come to Nashville for a week for band rehearsals or whatever, just fly in. If you want to write for a week, you fly in and then go back home. Yeah, no, it works out total. And it's, I always say it's an hour flight and an hour time difference. So I can leave here at seven and get there at seven. But the best thing to come out of this pandemic for me is the Zoom rights. Because nobody yeah. would ever write a song on Zoom before. And before I had to fly in to write. And now I can write every day just right here in Carolina because everybody's hopping on Zoom. How do you feel about the Zoom rights? <laughs> Hated it at first. I mean, I, I actually didn't even do them for like the first six months of the pandemic. So I was just like, I am not... I'm not doing that. I love the camaraderie. I love getting out, getting there and joking around for an hour before you even start writing. Yep. Uh, but it's just, it's convenient, you know, and we've written some pretty cool songs over it. So, How do you feel about that, Jimmy? What's your perspective on the Zoom right? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> y'all know I got the attention span of a two-year-old. That's uh, right, true. So it's, uh, I've written some cool songs on Zoom, but just for me and my personality, it's like, nah. Yeah. I was writing some people from L.A., and then I was like, nah. So I just decided to go to L.A. Like, I went out there to, to do some TV stuff. Like, when I filmed American Idol, I went out there. But I went, like, four days before. Oh, just, that was awesome. Just, just, just so I could write. Because <clears throat> yeah. uh, the Zoom thing, I can write, like, when I'm writing pop songs for other artists or, like, or like hip-hop hooks for other artists, I can do that on Zoom. But, like, country, I need to be, if I really want to get a good lyric and a good vibe, I got to be in the room. Yeah, I feel that. I see you had a... You have breakfast and lunch with Babyface. That's yeah, really dude, <laughs> he was cool, man. Ashley Gorley set that up. Shout out to Ashley Gorley for that. Awesome. He was like, "Hey, man, would you want to write with Babyface?" I'm like, "Bro, I'm you... black. Of course, I want to write with Babyface." <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think everybody just loves Baby. Like, and he's a cool dude, man. Like, just chill. Um, you know, who's your favorite <clears throat> icon you've ever met or got to write with? Oh my goodness. Uh, for me, um, getting to meet Merle Haggard back in the day, it's probably 2012 or 13, I think it was. He came to North Carolina. I was home and it was the same kind of thing. One of my just buddies in Nashville was like, Hey, Merle's going to be there, you know, 20 minutes from where you, where you live. Do you want to go meet him? I was just like, are you kidding me? So we go back and, and see him by his bus and hang out for a little bit. And, I mean, it was, all the stories you hear, man, when he opened up the bus door, it was a cloud of smoke that followed him. It was amazing. But That's crazy. he was so chill. It was pretty awesome. That's crazy. Who 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 haven't you met that you want to meet? Which icon? For me, um, and I've been lucky to to meet a lot of folks that I grew up loving. Loretta Lynn would be one that I, I would, you know, love to meet. Uh Got the chance to meet Dolly on the ACM red carpet one year, and you can just see this little, you know, this <laughs> grin where I was just like, this, this is bananas. Um, well, I don't know. Loretta's probably up there. There's a lot of them that I would love to meet that have already passed on. For me, Elvis was my guy. Yeah. And, uh, right. but yeah, it's been pretty. And uh, the cool thing is in country music, all your heroes are, are, that are still around, they're just so chill. They're just uh, kind of walking around and hanging you know, out. Yeah, just hanging out. You're like, oh my God, is that really who I think it is over there chilling? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want I want to meet uh, Jimmy Allen. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> but, you don't, don't want to do that. I don't want to meet that guy. You definitely don't want to meet me at the bowling lanes. You definitely. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Scotty, I'm going to need for you to fly in the tent. That must have been show. bad, man. It must have been a bad day at the bowling alley for you, bro. It's a bad week at the bowling alley for me. It's been a bad pandemic for you. Yeah, it has not been a bad pandemic for me. It's been a bad week. <laughs> Daddy, what's, I'm curious to know, I always like asking artists this, uh, what is something you do every show, um, before every show, whether it's by yourself, whether it's with your band, whether it's with your wife, uh, whether it's with your parents, sisters, do you have like some sort of routine you do? So I am, uh, I'm the most boring guy there. Like, I don't have a same routine. We don't, get in a huddle and do a shot we'll drink we'll have a bunch of beers and some whiskey before the shows uh, for me if, if i'm being honest it's legitimately like just sitting down watching there's probably a game on and i've got a box of cheese that's with me I, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's the most random thing but and i don't eat cheese it's 
anywhere. I don't have them at home. I don't have them anywhere except on my bus. And I, I crush them. So that's that's my pre show routine. What's, wow. what's the craziest thing or the weirdest thing you think you have on your rider? Um, well, I make sure they separate all my M&Ms from green. Brown, <laughs> all, <yeah. laughs> I know an artist who does that. <laughs> no, honestly, when I started out, I was so young and I, I had no idea what a rider was. So Mike, my tour manager, Mike, was like, all right, man. So what do you want on your rider? I was like, what is that? He was like, it's like, well, a venue will like prepare all the stuff. Well, I have stuff waiting for it. I was like, we have to pay for it. I was like, no, they provide it for you. Oh, that's cool. He's like, so what do you want? I don't know. Maybe some like potato chips, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. I mean, I literally, I had no idea. The more you tour and the bigger you get, you start realizing what you can put on there. Dude, yeah. I got a fresh, two fresh pairs of uh, long American Eagle compression shorts and three pairs of the Nike socks. <clears throat> that's on your rider. That's on your rider. <laughs> I love putting on unworn, fresh underwear and fresh socks before every show. I got my Grizzly wow. in the green on there. I got Makers, Crown Apple, Strawberry Pop Tarts with the frosting. With uh, the fr yeah, yeah. You gotta have the frosting on the Pop Tarts. You gotta. Yeah. I started putting a uh, massage therapist on there, and ninety-eight percent of the time, they okay it. Really? Mm -hmm. that Last there for about like Scotty, five. you do Scotty, you doing it wrong then, bro. You Man, I've been doing this for a decade now. <laughs> I ain't close to that. I'm talking fresh underwear. <laughs> massage, massage therapist. <laughs> I was old. see, I was old when I got my record deal. You know what I mean? So oh. I had a chance to kind of sit back and kind of see how it is. And then my body's old now. You know what I mean? I gotta Man. I had to make sure I'm right when I'm doing all my jumping with my little pants on. Well, there's 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 a reason why he can do spins and make it look good. He's yeah. a massage therapist before. And those jeans are they still got plenty of good elastic in them. They're, yeah. they're fresh. The underwear is fresh. The jeans are fresh. Oh, dude, I yeah. I have never heard that. That's yeah. Like, you you might have to you might have to re uh, rethink your hair rider over there, uh, Scotty. I'm gonna get to work as soon as we get off of this. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I noticed. Like I was asking a few artists that have crazy stuff on there. Um, it's a lot of people put crazy stuff on there, not because they really want it, but just to see if people are actually paying attention to detail. Yeah. yeah. Like, like the Eminem separation. People will ask for multicolored uh, marshmallows and ask for the pink ones in one bowl. Multicolored mushrooms. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> marshmallows. <laughs> They'll ask for the pink ones in one bowl and the white ones in another one. Uh, kind of just to see if they uh, pay attention. If there was, I think I might know the answer to this. If there was one family member of yours who has passed, um, that you could have just one more day with them, who would it be? Yeah, it'd be both my grandpas. Yeah. Uh, Granddaddy Bill was the guy that I wrote five more minutes about. He was my guy. We'd go out and golf together, and he'd be sitting down. Uh, he had this den. It was all glass overlooking his backyard and his pool and he'd sit there in the corner he had his he loved to smoke a pipe so he'd have his pipe and he'd have he had like 50 of them and his tobacco everywhere and he'd sit there and it smells so good we just we just talk for hours about life and just what was going on so um he'd be a guy i'd love to to uh, sit down with and i never got to smoke with him and i i I'm on a big cigar kick right now, so I think that would be. Yeah, I need for you to come to Nashville then, so we can go, we can go cigars. Dude, I've, my humidor is like just filled to the max. I gotta buy yeah. another one, but my wife's like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I come to North Carolina. My mom lives in Cary, so maybe I'll come to North Carolina. Dude. I base I'm on the Raleigh Cary line. Like I can throw a rock to Cary right here. Oh, we yeah. I need to come to North Carolina. Then. We can go. We can have some uh some cigars. Scotty has a really good arm too. We was I uh, forgot what show it was. Uh, I still wear my high school. This is my high school baseball. Yeah. Hoodie, and I, I wear this daily. My guys like you ever gonna move on from your high school glory days? Like that's all I got, man. Never. Like does, does anyone ever move on from your high school glory days? <laughs> no. I thought about things I did in high school like it was yesterday. My few accomplishments. Like that's now, the older I get, I embellish on the stories a little more. You know, that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Time I okay. tell my grandkids, I was, yeah, I was, you know, first team all, all USA. Would have made the league if I didn't blow up my arm. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, yeah, I played defensive tackle. No, I didn't. No, yeah. Not at all. 
I was the punter. You were a punter? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get hit for in football. So I, I played soccer to get in shape for basketball season. Because soccer, boy, talking about some running. It's the opposite of golf. <laughs> the yeah. opposite of golf. I tried out for soccer one year because it was the different it was a different season than baseball. And our soccer team was bad. So everybody said, man, if you are the least bit athletic, you're going to make the Garner High School soccer team. So all my buddies on the baseball team, we all tried out. Everybody made the team. I got cut on the very first day. I mean, oh. they said, no, 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 no. This kid is, this kid is not it. This is a man. <laughs> coach, my, my baseball coach is going to make me run cross country. And I was just like, I am not doing that. Crap. So guy like, you can't cut me. You yeah. know, I Spanish blood in my family. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. I, my, I was such a disappointment to my family. My but shut up. <laughs> Ended up, the coach called me back and was like, we're going to have you on as a reserve player. And I was like, I'm, I'm not going to do a reserve player, but I'll be a coach. So they let me be a coach. And I, like, legitimately had a clipboard, a whistle. I wore, like, that Bobby Bowden straw hat. Yes. And this was at a time when I still could I, – I didn't mind dip at this point. I was doing a little bit with baseball. So every day I'd be on the soccer field. I had a cherry dip in, straw hat, whistle, clipboard. <laughs> I mean, the season, if the boys didn't call me Coach Scott, they all had to run a lap. I mean, that's it was so funny. That's I might have sucked, but I could coach. Hey, listen, that's shit. hilarious. So, what football team? Yeah, football, basketball, and baseball team. Me? Yeah, professional. Um, so my dad grew up in New England, so I grew up a big Red Sox. I know. I'm sorry, Marcus. I grew up a big uh, Red Sox guy, uh, Patriots fan, big old Patriots fan. And I'm sorry. Uh, basketball would be the sales. Like, I don't follow a ton of NBA. I'm more of the – growing up in North Carolina on Tobacco Road is kind of college or bust. So, big college basketball. Fan. So, what's been, what's, been the, uh, what's been the best advice given to you in, in, in the industry? Um, wow. There's been so much. I mean, you're talking about getting to meet your heroes, and everybody's got advice for you. Got to do the Paisley tour from 2012, and man, we just sit down and have dinner, and he'd just be showing me the ropes. I mean, that was like a like a college class for 20 minutes with Paisley having dinner. Um, but I, I think the the number one thing I took away from all that is is control what you can control, and like get invested in that, but don't let the other stuff bother you. You know, I I can do we can do a hundred radio shows, but if they're not gonna you know up the spins a little bit, you know, it's like I did what I can do, and I, otherwise I'm gonna sit back. And, let everything play out. So uh, control what you can control and don't sweat the other stuff. And if you know me, I don't sweat too much. I, I, I'm, about, I'm so laid back, I'm horizontal, basically. So I, <laughs> God is definitely the most chill guy I think I've probably, like, ever met. I, I don't know what it is, man. My, my motto is just go with the flow. Like, whatever happens, okay. We'll, we'll make it work. We'll go with it. So That's awesome. I remember one time we uh we were on we were on the road. Marcus Scotty can throw. Scotty playing all all time quarterback. It was uh yeah, that was great. That was a great day. It was, fun. It was kind of slippery. So me and Tate was out there. So Tate's my bass player for everybody listening. And me and Tate are both alpha males, very competitive. We talk trash all the time. And yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> he didn't have on any uh cleats. We're playing in the grass. So there's a few times where I kind of chopped him up. I burnt him. But what Tate didn't know was I actually had cleats on, so I could grip. <laughs> oh, that's messed up. See, and sliding around like he on a slip and slide. Unless I take it, sit. I'm not trying to lose it. Anything. Oh, no. <clears throat> Tearing him up. Tearing him up. Yeah. Is there video of this? Because I really need to see this. I, I do have some video. Yeah, you need to give me that video so we can go ahead and post that. <laughs> His wife and uh, uh, my fiance was taking video on the sideline. And then my drummer and my guitar player are brothers, so I call them twin one and twin two, even though they're not twins. They look they're just not twins. I, I I know I get them confused. Just the, like they order the same food at restaurants. It's like I'll see one of them; they'll both look at the menu. Then Seth will order, and Josh is still looking. I'm like, why are you looking at the menu? You're about to order the same thing Seth just ordered, bro. <laughs> like, and without fail, they order the same thing, and they're like two or three years apart. Remember, I got a mixed up. I got a mixed up at the bowling alley. Oh yeah, you can't tell them apart. I can't tell them apart. It's like I got. It's like <laughs> I think they said not all white people look alike. No. My drummer has long hair. 
And if he had short hair like his brother, you wouldn't be able to tell him apart. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And you, don't to, you don't need to focus on, on telling those guys apart, Marcus. You need to focus more on throwing the ball down the alley. Oh. Oh, 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 Scotty. Come on, Scotty. Marcus will have some games where he's like really good. They'll have some games. My son almost beat him one time. Oh man, he talks and he talks so much trash. Oh yeah, he gets from the apple don't fall far. Yeah, not at all. Like no, the, the, he is the apple. It's like gonna <laughs> be like Marcus, you trash. You are trash. <laughs> like, it was bad. Like he was talking so much smack, and I'm just like, what is going on? Marcus turned it on. I said, Marcus, you better not let Aiden beat you. I'm telling you right now, you will never live this down if you lose in bowling to a six-year-old with no bumpers. Oh, I was, that was my next question. I don't let my son bumpers. use bumpers because he was like, Daddy, can I use some bumpers? No, son, ain't no bumpers in life, okay? <laughs> we'll learn how to – because that's Everybody what my – That's a life lesson. Dude, my dad was a Marine. He was redneck, you know, super like, you know, you're going to figure life out. There ain't going to be no shortcuts. So I don't let my son use no bumpers. That's <laughs> amazing. So, so Scotty, who's your uh, dream collaboration? Dream collab? Um, Cause you ha have you had any? You haven't had any duet. I haven't had a ton. We got one we're working on right now. Um, that's coming out soon, I think. We might have another on the record. I had a. Uh, uh, my dream was probably to do one with Garth, and I was I was this close. I mean, called him up. We were chatting about it. Had this song. It was about like a, uh, a boyfriend going to ask a father for his daughter's hand in marriage. I was at that point. There was a point in the song where like the father comes in and is talking. It was like the perfect kind of father figure thing. So I sent it to Garth, called him up. We chatted. And he was like, dude, I'm all about this. Like, let's go do it tomorrow. Um, but then with me, it just took a while to get it all to work out. And then by that time, he was already kind of had his project going and just everything didn't work out well it might be time for that again it might be time to go push that again collaborations are right. in i'm trying to start a trend in country music where everybody's because that's what i love about you know christian and especially like pop and hip-hop they yeah. collaborate all the time you know and i'm like we collaborate all the way until the performance we collaborate in the songwriting we collaborate in production we collaborate in marketing we collaborate in mixing you know we collaborate in everything the creative but a lot of that but the performance is where we typically don't collaborate. So that's why I was like, I'm finna do a whole album of just collaborations. Like, and then I said, we're not done. We're gonna do an extended version of this album. Cause I got some more collabs, but dude, it would be dope to see you and Garth uh, do a song together. Oh, that'd be fun, man. Dude, why don't Jimmy, you deep think, Jimmy thinks about everything from 30,000 feet where I, I, I kind of am always just chilling. Why don't, why don't you and Jimmy, I think you and Jimmy should do a collaboration together. Hey, I'm down with that. Absolutely. I'd be all about I, listen, it. Listen, I'm just I'm, we can't do a music video though, because your dance moves will put me up. Yeah, We're not no, doing that. Yeah, no dance moves. <laughs> I don't really I don't dance in uh, in my music videos. I kind of just walk around and prank. I do more did Scotty uh tell you about the prank he did when we were on tour? So I had this section in my show where I would put on this light up jacket, right? And all the lights would turn off. And then my jack would just light with a little strobe light. And I'd like do this dance to this Michael Jackson song, like slide across the stage and spin. So one show, you know, Scotty came out there with Christmas lights. <laughs> I heard the people cheering and going crazy. And I'm like, well, I'm killing it right now. I turned around and Scotty is banned. I was like, because I didn't think Scotty was going to do a prank. So I just thought I was going to do it. So I came out there with his picture from American Idol. Just like, oh man, I up. hate Dude, that's that is the worst part. That's <laughs> the worst part about doing Idol so young. I mean, and they filmed me a lot when I was 16, too. So if you go look up Scotty McCreary on like Giphy or Jiffy, however you say it, it's just me as this, you know, 17 year old kid like doing the sprinkler and like just <laughs> looking like a complete idiot. So anytime somebody's, you know, messing with me, they just they bring that up, and it's, I have nothing to say because it's, it's horrendous looking. Just bad. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. What can the people look forward to, man? What you got, uh, what you're working on that you can talk about, what you got uh, coming out soon that you're excited about? 
Yeah, man, we've been writing away. The crazy thing, with we're working on this new album. We just finished up cutting it. Now I just got to get vocals done. So I'm going to Nashville a lot in the next few weeks to do that. Um, the crazy thing was we, we cut most of the album pre-COVID, pre-cut pandemic. Like we got it done in February, and um, but then everything just kind of shut down. So then I had all this time at home to sit there and pick up the guitar and write songs and hop on Zoom and do some collabs. And, um We'd written a lot, or we'd cut a lot of outside stuff. I didn't think I was really writing that great of stuff at the moment. And I, I just couldn't find it. And you have an album, we had songs like Five More Minutes, and this is it that was so meaningful to me. I was like, I got to write that again. I just didn't think we were there. So we cut a lot of outside stuff. And then I had a year to write, and I felt like we really got on a good train to write. Um, got on a roll a little bit and wrote songs that I was loving again. So uh, we went back in and we just cut nine more songs and I've never overcut for an album but I was like went to the label and I was like look I, I can't picture this album without these songs we've just wrote in the last six months so um so we've overcut now which is great we'll have a lot of stuff for like extended editions and, and stuff like that but should be coming out in the next few months I would think yeah that's awesome yeah, that's phenomenal I can't wait to hear this album though yeah I'm a listen I'm a Scotty McCready fan man you know from the first time I got to meet you uh, back on Idol and your parents, uh, you know, I love them to death, your sister, just good people, man. Um, and, you know, I just want to tell you, I'm proud of you. Thank you for taking me on my first tour, by the way. Uh, Cause you know, when you had me come out, I was shocked. I was like, what? Oh, come on, man. Really? It's got it's taking me out. Cause I remember I had, I had asked before if you would do, you know, if I could try to do like a tour with you. Somebody was like, well, I'm not sure how Scotty really feels about taking people out for American Idol and stuff like that. I was like, well, I didn't make it that far. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, we were, we were pumped to have you out. And honestly, we, we were just doing clubs there, but it's not going to be too song, too long before we're seeing Jimmy Allen headlining arenas. I mean, I, I think we just, yeah, I think you're just skimming the surface, man, of, of where you're headed. So I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm pumped to just kind of keep watching you go with the ACM New Arts of the War, a Year Award. And you, you just keep crushing it, man. So I, I'm a, I'm a I, massive fan. I, I love how you, you're comfortable in being you. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people that, you know, kind of want to chase what everybody else is doing. And I think the, the cool thing about being a man and realizing you're a man is, hey, look, this is what I do. You know, this is what I'm comfortable doing. And, you know, it doesn't matter who likes it. This is what I like, you know what I mean? And yeah. you, you make music for people that love your music. And that's all you focus on. And I listen, man, you you have a you have a confidence about you that you don't need to speak on. It just carries. You know what I mean? Like you walk in the room like, I know I'm Scotty McCreary. Without saying I'm Scotty McCreary. It's like you're comfortable in your skin, you know what I mean? And that's it's cool to see, man. Uh I feel old now, like just watching you go from sixteen to what are you now, 27? 27, yep. Yeah, like, oh, I feel old. I'm telling you. <laughs> but it's so I, odd. I'm, I'm, old, I'm older than Scotty? What? Oh, get out of here, man. You're just sitting there talking about, you know, doing what you do, and I think that's so important for everybody. It's important yeah. to grow and stuff, but you just got to know who you are. Luckily, I've had 10 years to kind of learn that because there was a time where I was like, all right, I got to – country's changing, the sound is changing, I got to chase this. And I tried it. We, we recorded just a song that was not me. I think it peaked at, <laughs> I think it peaked at number 103 on the country radio charts. And then the label dropped my ass. And I said, no more. I, I got to I'm doing me from here on out. So it's, yeah, uh, that's the lesson. Gotta, that's gotta the do. lesson. The music you're making now, man, um, it's it's you. You know what I mean? Like, I remember there was a time where I was like, like I all my dad listened to was traditional country sounding stuff. And I love it. You know what I mean? But I when I when it comes down for me to sit and write it, where well, I can write it, but me performing it, it's just, you know, it's not me. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it's where I love what Brothers Osborne does. Yeah. But I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love Brothers Osborne, man. I just can't. I love what you do. I can't do it. I can't pull it off. And that's why I tell artists the cool thing about every successful artist we love is they double down on being themselves. And that's what makes it special. You never see two artists that are the same, that sound the same, write the same songs, look the same, have the same level of success. Because it's only one you. 
You know what I mean? And that people connect with you, you know, uh, same thing with you, Marcus, man. I, I'm proud of what you've grown with here at the smoke and section. That's why I asked you, bro, can I be a part of it? Can we co-host and, you know, interview people, uh, together, man. So it's all about, you know, finding yourself and everyone out there listening, you know, be comfortable in who you are. You know, you, this, the success is different to, to, to everybody. You know, success isn't about the amount of money in your bank about, it's not about the amount of people that know your name. It's about, are you happy with where you're at? Uh, are you happy with the people in your life? And that's it. Absolutely. absolutely. That's absolutely it. I appreciate that. This is a, that's, that's, I mean, I couldn't say any better. I couldn't end on a better note. This is a, this has been another episode of Spoken Section Podcast uh, with my special guest co-host, Jimmy Allen. And my, man, this is so cool. I have Scotty McCreary. I have two, eight. I'm in the Zoom with two, eight. Scotty, too hotty. I'm in the, I'm in the Zoom with two ACM new artists in the years. Ain't that something? Scotty, and I say this with all, the confidence in the world with all the security I have as a man. Dude, you've grown into a good looking dude. You're a good looking dude. You're a good looking dude. Knock <laughs> the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you, brother. Uh, you enjoy your day. Uh, tell the wife and your parents I said hello and your sister. Um, and when you get to Nashville, give us a shot, man. Let's get a cigar. Yeah, let's get a cigar. I want to get in on the bowling match. And yeah, Marcus, let me know if you're in carry too anytime because I'll, I'll have a stogie waiting on you. Definitely. I'll take your number after this. We'll make it happen. Absolutely. Y'all yeah. be good, fellas. Bye. You're listening to the smoking section.